you're interested to learn web technologies and more stuff so visit abnations.com or you can comment below for more tutorials you can also support us on the social networks and so so that's it and let's get back started hey what's going on guys so in this video we are going to talk about the angular 7 crash course and this is a series and i try to explain every concept as better i can right so let's move into the slides so what is angular so angular is a full-featured javascript framework created and maintained by google and is used for building front-end application of a full stack application and uh, where you maybe have something like node or python or php running on the back end and angular is very popular in large enterprise means that it's good for the large scale applications right so angular version is something which has really confused a lot so angular js was released in 2010 and uh, the angular version uh, some people uh, confused for a long time back in 2010 angular is uh, is released which is still available today but it's completely different framework in all aspects when they created angular version 2 so they decided to complete rewrite of a framework so updates that have made the framework better smaller and faster so angular refers to the version 2 plus right now we have an angular version 7 so it is the same framework with a few changes mostly under our hood so why we use angular other framework it gives us an organized front end structure so all your user interface parts are basically components reusable components we also have modules and services which will uh, which will be getting into a later uh, a little later so extremely powerful and well featured all in one solution routing http and rxjs so what that actually means is that um, uh, it, it has a router has its own http module it uses the rxjs library which is a which is reactive extension includes things like observables for asynchronous data to uh, so it's uh, so it's packed with different features and different concepts so build powerful single page application apps it uses an mvc type pattern which stands for model view controller which is essentially backend pattern but uh, with angular we can structure our front end application in a similar way so model is actually where our database view is what we see and the controller is the combination of model and view so typescript it also uses a typescript which is a superset of javascript something it means meaning it includes everything javascript does plus more including static typing and many es6 like features such as classes arrow functions and so on and uh, we have a very powerful cli command line interface in angular where we can generate the component services and many other different modules so why you should know before learning angular and um, as like other framework you should uh, first know the basics of javascript including things like object functions arrays and all that good stuff there and there are other things that could help you if you learn it beforehand but i'm not going to say that you have to learn these things before some of these i learned with angular such as typescript which is superset of javascript all right so then we go into the uh, promises and the observables and uh, promises are used for asynchronous data or asynchronous operations and observables uh, works in a similar way where it's an open data streams and, ob and observables are included with the rxjs which is a reactive extension and angular comes with rxjs by default and we use a service for example we make a http request to some api we usually return as an observable to the component okay so if that sound confusing don't worry we will uh, we're gonna let, uh, get into all so then it's had the mvc pattern as i explained you um so angular way is like um, uh, as i said it uses typescript of a javascript uh, which includes static typing you don't have to use static typing uh, that's a beauty of it it's optional however i would suggest using it because it's it can make your application more robust so angular uses a component base like other frameworks and um, um, uses services to share data functionality between uh, components so angular is comprised of many different modules such as root module http module instead of using like the fetch api to or to, or to install axios 
um, um, or some other library, library, you get a custom HTTP module to make your get request and post request, request and so on. Um, so use RxJS observables for asynchronous op operations. So that's what actually it means that um, as in many cases by using observables by, which are basically open data streams. So when make an HTTP request from a service, we usually return an obse observable and then subscribe to that observable in that component and that's how we handle asynchronous operation. And uh, steep learning curve relative to other frameworks. So actually uh, I will say that it's very high level and so unlike React and Vue, there is not too many ways to do the same things which can make things a bit easier in that aspect but again it's such a large framework that and there's a lot to a lot in that and it, and it makes uh, learning uh, learning it kind of difficult so the anatomy of a components is we bring in the components package from the angular core so angular have a bunch of different packages that it includes so this is actually a typescript decorator uh, so here I want to explain you the whole code. So import component on in it from Angular core. So from the core uh, have bunch of different packages and uh, Angular uh, works, uh, the core works for the critical part of the Angular. And then down here we have the uh, add the rate component which is actually a uh, um, decorator and it, and it includes metadata for the component. So the selector here you see um, we have our selector, template URL, style URLs. So the first selector is, is what we are going to use as the HTML tag to insert the component into our browser. Uh, we have also have our template URL and uh, which is going to be an HTML file where we can actually use strings interpolation where we can embed variable and stuff like that. We also have a style sheet here, um, a style URL. So a style sheet associated with the components. So just like React and Vue, you have your functionality and your JavaScript or TypeScript in our case. So you, you also have our CSS for styling. So down you see uh, we have a styling and um, uh, you can um, add your um, HTML for your template. So you can do styling and then you have templates on HTML. Everything is, bound, is bundled within that component, all right? So that's all about that. Okay, so down here, you see we have also a class um, uh, with the name of class app components. So it's what actually it does that we have that on in it and we also bring it up here. So that's where you see that um, uh, we have uh, exported our class and imported up here. And so we also have a properties name and ages uh, you see here that we have the name and age and also the type string and age uh, we pass the number for our age. So uh, we, we all have the properties and um, we can implement it with our functions, with our parameters and our function and so on. So I think so that's very much the gist of it. And uh, we also have the Angular CLI, NGNU test app for creating a new application in the Angular, ng serve to run your application, ng build for the deployment. And we can also generate the components and uh, services modules uh, by using the Angular CLI. So let's get in and uh, we see some file structure and do some installation. 